The unpredictable nature of compartment fires means check everything, even though the fire appears to have died down. Think before you act. Observe before you move. Take a look at what could happen. No flames. It's only smoke. It's safe enough, isn't it? Open the door. Air is sucked in, and the result is catastrophic. In general firefighting operations, most incidents are routine, but every fire is different and potentially unpredictable. And I looked at this this shop window, this bow window. And I was keen, I was excited. Big fire, get in there, got a jet, not a hose reel. And I really wanted to progress, advance, and get stuck into the job. And this, this retained fellow going, saying, hang on, boy. What's going on? This is something not right here. And at that point, the window just shattered. And it wasn't a bow window at all, it was just the pressure of the fire behind it. I bowed the window out, and eventually it just burst. The process that causes this explosive reaction is primed when there is a restricted air supply to a compartment in which there is a fire. The oxygen is used up quicker than it can be replaced. This often takes place in a fast burning fire, which will have a high heat output. Some materials have a very high burn rate, and the heat radiating from the hot gases at ceiling level can accelerate this burn rate by up to eight times in a compartment fire. Alternatively, a smouldering fire can burn for hours, gradually heating the compartment and using up all the oxygen. Either way, the result could be the same. The compartment will gradually fill with flammable gases as more fuel is vaporised. This will be accelerated if the whole environment is hot. There may be very little evidence that anything is happening. In fact, the atmosphere inside may have reached a stable state. This is a sign of potential danger. If the fire has died down, the gases in the room will start to cool and so contract. This may draw small amounts of air into the room. Where this air comes into contact with the flammable gas, a flame may burn, causing the gases to expand again until it is extinguished by the vapour-rich atmosphere. The room may appear to be breathing. The vapours will only require a good supply of oxygen to form a very explosive mixture, and one small spark could trigger it. In a compartment fire, unburned flammable vapours can accumulate if there is a shortage of oxygen. When an opening is created, providing sufficient oxygen, and there is a source of ignition, a sudden deflagration can move through the compartment and out of the opening. There is often a lot of confusion between flashover and backdraft. Flashover occurs when there is a good continuous supply of oxygen. A backdraft will only occur after a fire has been starved of oxygen. A backdraft is usually a short duration event but the flames can generate intense heat, igniting other surfaces in their path. There are two main situations when backdrafts can occur, but in both cases, the final outcome can be unpredictable. The first scenario is when the fire in a closed compartment is not completely out. On opening a door or a window, oxygen will flow towards the ignition source and mix with the flammable vapours. Once ignited, the flame will spread through any area where there is a combustible mixture. This is usually at the boundary of the inflowing air and the hotter gases. The flame will travel back towards the opening, creating massive turbulence and a vigorous mixing of air and flammable gases. This may result in a jet of hot gas and flame being driven out of the doorway. It is not easy to predict whether this will always happen or how long it may take once the door has been opened. Oh. 
Um, Kevin gave me a briefing, the team leader, there was no problem. So I was more than happy to send him in for a rescue. I went back in with the Usreel. And when you take it, there is 24 steps to climb the stairway. I turned, picked the child up and walked to the path which was no more than 15 steps away. On reaching the top of the step, we heard this whooshing sound. And it's the only way to describe it, it's a rush of air. As we turned, we could physically see the porch door slamming closed. And it slammed closed that tight, it actually jammed on the ooze reel. It was a total surprise because it wasn't the only thing that really was coming out of the front door was black smoke. There was no flames. You couldn't even see no flames through the house. So the front, the only place you could see the flames was actually at the back of the house. And I was the only one who ran round to the back of the house to see the flames. So it, it was just like there was no. It was I, at that point I thought it was nothing to worry about at all, like because it was just smoke coming out of the house, and they'd been trained to walk into smoke. Hopefully, that we've learned that there is no such thing as a basic house fire. They don't exist. They just do not exist. The second scenario is when the process is delayed. The fire has possibly died down and there are no visible flames. But pyrolization is continuing, albeit more slowly. When the door is opened or a window smashed for ventilation, the air flows in with no apparent change and though it cannot be seen, a very explosive mixture is formed because all of the gases are given a chance to mix with the new supply of oxygen. Any BA team would be unaware of the invisible mixing taking place and with no obvious signs of danger, unwittingly enter the compartment. In doing so, they increase the risk of a delayed backdraft in two ways. By moving through the compartment, they accelerate the mixing of air and flammable gases. And secondly, their movements and the action of turning over could expose a source of ignition. It would only take a small spark to trigger a backdraft with them now in the compartment. It has been observed experimentally that the burning due to turbulence reaches downwards towards the floor as the flames search for more oxygen. Even at low level, there is no escape from the flames. Serious or fatal injury is unavoidable. Well, when the fire kit I've been issued, you think it's going to protect you, but at 800 degrees, it's not really going to protect you for that long. You're not fireproof. Even when you don't open the door, you may be standing in a hazardous environment. If the fire has been burning for some time, flammable gases may escape the compartment and form an explosive mixture in other parts of the building, particularly in the roof space and the area directly outside the room. This is the area where the firefighters will be. There would be an increased risk of an explosion when the door is opened, providing a source of ignition. This could be by auto-ignition of hot gases or flying embers. In a confined area, the flames could totally fill the space. The problem with backdraft is that it is unpredictable. The moment you open the door, you relinquish control of the situation and you are forced merely to react to events. However, before you open the door, there are some signs and symptoms that could indicate a possible backdraft. The first is the presence of a lot of dense smoke with no obvious sign of flame. If the fire has been burning long enough, smoke is forced out of the fire compartment and may be leaking from the building. Smoke blackened windows suggest that the fire has already generated a lot of smoke. There may be holes, possibly in a cracked window or the gap around a door, breathing, where smoke appears to emerge and then be sucked back. This is due to intermittent ignition inside the compartment, causing expansion and contraction of the gases within. There may be whistling sounds around the door, or at a small opening, as air is being drawn in or forced out. But with BA on, you probably won't hear it. The door handle may be very hot, and there may be signs of heat. Prevent an uncontrolled backdraft occurring 
at all costs. Once the process of deflagration begins, there is little that can be done to stop it. An oxygen-starved fire is a dangerous animal, and the closed door is your shield. So keep the door shut whilst making an assessment. So you've decided that the room on the other side of the door may contain flammable gases, and there may be a backdraft if you enter it. You may decide to leave that room until later. Or it may be necessary to deal with it in a different way. The best way to deal with a potential backdraft is to release the gases into the open air. The safest way to do this is to ventilate the room from the outside. The principles of ventilation are covered in depth by the third video in this series. Opening an outside door or window will allow fresh air in and the hot gases out. This may trigger a backdraft, so proper precautions are necessary. And you have to control the event itself in direction and timing. If you don't have the option of an external opening, you would have to open the door to the fire compartment itself. This is hazardous. In order to minimize the dangers, try to make things as safe as possible. Flammable gases may have escaped from the room into the space you occupy. These need to be cooled and dispersed. If possible, ventilate the outer compartment. Otherwise, spray small quantities of water towards the ceiling. This will cool the gases and reduce the chance of ignition in your space. Try to identify where the flammable gases and a possible backdraft will go when you open the door. Create a route for them so that they go to fresh air as quickly and safely as possible. Mixed with enough air, they are too weak to burn and the situation will be made safe. Before any attempt is made to open the door, cover it with a charged branch set on wide spray and make sure your escape route is covered by a backup team with a charged hose line. Get low and place yourself to the side of the door. Keep out of the likely path of any backdraft. Make sure that you hold onto the door handle as you open the door so that you can shut it again quickly if the situation looks dangerous. Remember that air can be drawn rapidly into the room. The door handle could be snatched out of your hand, so we have to be careful. Open the door slightly and spray up towards the ceiling through the gap, using pulses to avoid over-application. Then close the door and let the spray do its job. Repeat this as often as necessary. You also need proper communications so that everyone else knows that you are opening up the room. Also, you should double check that no one else is opening up doors or windows. If a fireball comes at you, stay low and to the side and use your spray as a shield. It will give you some protection. If you manage to cool the room without triggering a backdraft, don't forget that there are still flammable gases inside. They have been cooled and made inert by the presence of steam in the room, but they are still dangerous. Also, the more fuel that is cooled, the less flammable gas will be generated, so put water on as much of the room as possible, including the ceiling and walls. Upon entering any room that hasn't been ventilated, it's calculated risk. There are flammable gases present, which could easily ignite. So we've got to think twice. Once you have opened the room up and let fresh air in, the fire will probably increase in size. But it can now be treated as a straightforward interior fire. Your safety may depend on the following rules. Make sure you are properly protected. If you have the choice, keep out of the room and ventilate from outside. Check escape routes are secure and, if necessary, protected. Cool and ventilate the outer compartment. Plan an escape route for the gases before you release them. Stay low and to the side of the door. Open the door slightly and spray in through the gap, directing spray up towards the hot gases. Cool as much of the fire compartment as possible. 
keep out of the way of the hot steam and gases coming out of the room. Only enter the room if you have to. There may still be flammable gases present 